Hey, we're Jay and Jamie, and today we're gonna make a longboard. This is a project that I've wanted to do for a long time. I've been into skateboarding my entire life, but I've never made my own board. I, on the other hand, have never skateboarded like ever in my life, and it's kind of a little terrifying. We are gonna build a board that is so easy to ride and so comfortable and so awesome that you're just gonna like immediately fall in love with skateboarding and you're gonna do it all the time. Sweet. So on a scale of one to 10, how difficult of a woodworking project is this? One to 10 woodworking, probably like a two, maybe a three. It's basically a cutting board with wheels. All right, let's get started. All right. We started off with a couple pieces of walnut, a piece of sapele, which is African mahogany, and a nice white piece of maple. These weren't exactly scrap, but they were kind of awkwardly shaped pieces that we'd had around for a while, so they seemed like they'd be real good for this. After we rough cut them to size, we brought them over to the joiner so that we could join each face and edge perfectly flat and straight. This is going to help us a lot later when we glue this up into one big panel. At the table saw, we can rip these down to the exact width we need, plus it makes each edge parallel so that when we glue it into a panel, it's all going to be nice and straight. Next up, we wanted to get the hardware ready because we're going to use that to align some stuff. The trucks are Gullwing Sidewinder 2s, really nice, dual kingpin. These are the Reds bearings from Bones, always had a great experience with these. And the wheels are the 70mm 4 Presidents from Orangutans, they're massive. There's a bunch of different ways you can put bearings inside the wheels, but this is kind of the tried and true method. You slide the bearing onto the truck and then you just sort of push it into the wheel. There's one bearing on each side of each wheel, so you just gotta make sure that each one goes in all the way and they're nice and straight. Last up for the hardware prep was to bolt the wheels onto the trucks. This is super easy, you just need a socket wrench. And the only thing you have to really worry about is if you go too tight, the wheel's not gonna spin, and if you go too loose, the wheel's gonna kinda wiggle side to side. So you wanna find that sweet spot. Check below for links to all these parts. I joke that this is a lot like building a cutting board with wheels, and I was dead serious about that. It's the same woodworking techniques. We're gonna take some pieces of wood, we're milling them flat and straight, we're gluing together a panel, and then instead of taking it to the kitchen to cut on, we're gonna cut out a skateboard shape and put some wheels on it. Well, the next step for us, now that we've got our pieces milled up, is we're gonna glue them together into our panel and take it from there. So like I said, the goal here is we're gonna glue these four pieces of wood up into one big panel, and that's gonna make up our skateboard deck. The boards get tilted up onto the end and we're going to use a small roller to spread the glue very evenly across the edges. It's super important that you get every last bit of surface area so that you get a tight seal. From there we carefully tighten up the clamps, making sure that the board stays nice and straight as we get all the clamps on. It really helps to have a lot of clamps when you do a panel glue up like this. If you don't have this many, you'll probably be fine, but using as many as you can definitely helps. The glue is drying, so now is the perfect time for us to create the template for the shape of the longboard. Jay and I went online and looked at different longboard designs, and we settled on a really cool pintail shape. So now we're going to go work some magic in Photoshop. The deck we chose was from the Fiberflex series from Gordon and Smith. Once we get the image in Photoshop, control click on the layer to select the outline. We then smooth the selection to remove any jagged edges. Then we create a new layer and draw a two pixel stroke around our selection. Now you can see we have a nice clear outline of the shape we want. When you zoom in, you can see that the edges are fairly smooth, but they don't have to be perfect, so we're going to go in and shape it by hand anyway. We wanted the deck to be about 39 inches long, so we resized it and then printed it out. Once we had the printout, we taped it down to the desk, and then we used the trucks to mark out where they were going to go. The image that we used as the basis for our template did have holes in it for trucks, but since we resized it, we weren't confident that those were going to line up so we thought it would be a safer bet to align it ourselves and put everything exactly where we wanted it. This took a bit of measuring and making sure everything was square and straight, etc., but it wasn't too hard. Next, we just used a razor blade to cut out that shape carefully so that we could put it onto our deck. By now, the glue was dry, so we went over to the bench, took off all the clamps, and then took a look at the panel. Thankfully, it stayed nice and straight. Everything looked good, so we used a sharp chisel to scrape off the excess glue and then took it to the thickness planer to pass it through a few times to get it all parallel and down to the right thickness. Now that the board is perfectly flat, we're going to use the X-Carve to cut out some really bitchin' artwork. Now obviously you don't have to use a CNC machine for this. You could use a stencil or you could freehand your artwork on and that would be totally fine. But we really love using the X-Carve for things like this. I think it gives us a nice dramatic look, clean lines, and it makes it really easy to paint. After tracing the template onto the board to kind of roughly figure out where we wanted the artwork to go, we secured everything down to the table and got the carve started. 
We set it up to be 1 8 inch deep and we did it in two passes. There's a roughing pass which takes away the bulk of the material and then there's a detail pass which uses a v-groove bit to cut some really fine detail. We lost a couple of shots when our camera overheated from it being about 95 degrees in the shop that day, but as you can see it came out awesome. Once the carve was done, we did a little cleanup with some sandpaper and then it was ready for paint. We used some cardboard to cover up the wood and protect it from the paint. The paint we're using is some Rust-Oleum primer that we had on hand, and we're going to hit it from all three sides to make sure we get paint in all the little nooks and crannies. The primer was a good choice for this because it sticks to the wood really well, and we're going to cover it with some semi-gloss anyway. We're going to put the whole board through the planer to scrape off the top layer of paint. But paint really dulls the planer blades, so we want to take off as much as we can with a sharp razor first. Because we used so many layers of paint, this took a while, and we wanted to be really careful not to gouge our work and break off any corners. All we had to do was run it through the planer once to remove that final bit of paint. It came out awesome. There was one little scratch in the eye, but we touched that up later with paint. Guys, I'm so pumped about how this thing is coming out. It looks amazing so far. There's a good reason that we cut out the artwork on the bottom first before cutting out the curved profile of the skateboard and the bandsaw. That's because we wanted to use the straight edges of that board to reference off of so that we could make sure it's square to the table and get everything nice and straight positioned exactly where we want. Now that that's done, we're ready to cut out the skateboard shape. So let's get our template ready and hit the bandsaw. The first step was to actually stick the template to the wood. To do that, we used a stencil adhesive spray that we got at the craft store. You just spray it on, let it dry for about a minute, and then stick it onto the wood. This stuff is great because it sticks really well, but when you pull it back off, it doesn't leave any gross residue. The lines from the trucks actually helped us align it really nicely too. Alexa, turn on the dust collector. We used the bandsaw to cut out the template and tried to get as close to the line as we could. We knew that we were going to fare these curves at the bench and really dial them in with a hand plane, but it still helps to get as close as we can here. If you don't have a bandsaw, you could totally use a jigsaw for this too. I happen to hate jigsaws, so I like to use a bandsaw. Also, yes, Alexa can turn on our dust collector. We pulled the template off, and it came off really easily, like we said. That stuff we used is awesome. And then we forgot that we had to <laughs> mark the holes for the trucks, so we put the template back on, mark the holes, and then pull it off again. Next up, we're going to take it to the bench and smooth out some of these curves. The bandsaw leaves a bit of a rough surface, plus we didn't cut exactly to the line in certain places, so we brought it to the workbench, put it in the vise, and we're using a tool called a spoke shave to fair out the curves and make everything nice and smooth. A spoke shave is a type of hand plane that has a really small sole, which is the part that touches the wood on the bottom, so it's ideal for doing curves. You could just as easily use some sandpaper for this, but I really like using this tool. So much of woodworking is trying to get these perfect lines and these exact angles, so I really like doing curves and organic shapes sometimes, because it really doesn't matter if it's perfect, you just want it to look good. At this point I was pretty happy with it, so we went to the disc sander to take care of the tips on the front and back. These are end grain, so the spoke shape was not cutting them very well. We used a roundover bit on the router table to give it a nice round profile on each side, and remember that this is sped up footage, don't go that fast on the router table normally. Using the marks that we made from the template, we then drilled the holes for the hardware and countersunk them. I should have countersunk them first, but I forgot I had to do this, so I got a little chatter, but it's fine. With all the shaping done, it was time to do the surface prep for the finish. We used a sanding block and sanded up to 320 grit. We then raised the grain by spreading some water on it, let it dry, and then sanded it one more time to get a really nice surface. For the finish, we used a spray-on polyurethane with a satin finish. I don't normally use these canned finishes, but I was at this point really excited to ride the board and I didn't have the patience to do 24 hours per coat. Since the skateboard is going to be outside a lot and it could get wet, we wanted to do a bunch of coats of finish and make sure that it was going to be really durable, so we ended up doing five coats of this polyurethane. Let's just say we were not disappointed. It came out amazing. With the deck finished, it was time to put the grip tape on the top of it. Grip tape is sort of like a sandpaper type stuff. It has a sticky bottom and you stick it to the top of the skateboard so that when you're riding it, your feet stay on. I was so anxious and excited at this point, I wasn't thinking, and I used my hand to rub it down and I took off most of my fingerprint, which took about a week to grow back. Got smart and used a wooden block to do it and that worked a lot better. So uh, yeah, learn from my mistakes, don't use your finger. We had a vague idea of how to do this. We knew that we had to stick the tape down, get the air bubbles out, and then we cut around the edges to get the excess off. 
And then you use a hard surface like a screwdriver or something with a hard edge to rub down the edges to get the grip tape to stick right on the edge of the board. After that, it's just a matter of using a sharp razor to carefully trim off all the excess. I've put together a lot of skateboard decks in the past, but I've never built one from scratch. If you're thinking about building one yourself, I highly recommend it. It was really fun and really easy to do. Now I just have to decide if I'm going to hang this on the wall or go take it for a ride. Thank you so much for watching the video. We really hope you liked it. We'd never built a skateboard before, like we said, and I think it was a total success. We even got Jamie to ride it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click the like button and then check out the other projects we have. Also, please subscribe to the Wicked Makers channel. You can get notified every time we upload a new video and leave us a comment because we love hearing from you. Thanks again, guys, and until next time, stay wicked. What were we saying before? Cut out a little pin shape. Pin tail shape. Pin tail fin. Loosen wheels on. And voila! Cutting board with wheels.